Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach Jeff Copper, and we're here today with Dr. Russell Barkley. Dr. Barkley, welcome to the show. Hi, Jeff. Good to be back. Uh, I'm thrilled to have you on. Uh, I've heard you talk many times, and, and you, you, you have such a great way of putting things sometimes. One time you, you had mentioned that, think of the, the, your brain as the back half kind of the back part of your brain is the filing cabinet, it's the knowledge side, that's where you kind of go to school and you, you learn information and it's stored there. But the front part of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, that's where you take the information in the back and you manipulate it and you arrange it in order to execute it. And the issue with those with ADHD is they know what to do, but the problem is, is organizing and sequencing that information that they know and applying it. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. I think this is a crucial idea for people working with those with ADHD, not to mention for the patients themselves. You can oversimplify the way the brain works into a two-part process. There is the back part of the brain, as you've said, yep. which is the performance side, excuse me, the knowledge side of the yep. brain. That is where you acquire information about your environment, whether it's through school or observation or upbringing, but that's where you store that information. Now, the front part of the brain is the performance brain. That's where you take what you know and use it for more effective daily performance. So we have a knowledge brain, we have a performance brain, and ADHD partially decouples these two from each other. And what that means is that ADHD is much more of a performance disorder. It doesn't have to do with intelligence in terms of what you know or how smart you are, but it does have to do with how effectively you employ that knowledge and intelligence to your own benefit, to your own welfare, in your daily functioning, at work, at school, in relationships. And that's where the disorder causes the breakdown. And that is a major insight yep. into this disorder yep. when it comes to helping people to overcome this difficulty. Yep. Because right now, as you know, the principal means of helping people through psychological therapies is to try to teach them skills. Here's how to do this. Here's how yep. to manage yep. your time. Yep. Here's how to inhibit strong emotions. Yep. And we show people how to behave. We basically give them knowledge. Yep. And then we're shocked when they don't benefit from that. And we start blaming the ADHD patient themselves. Oh, you don't care, or you're just not motivated, yep. Yep. or you're just not intelligent. Yep. When in fact, it has nothing to do with any of that. It has to do with using what you yep. know at key points of performance in the environment where that knowledge should have come forward yep. to guide your effective behavior. So understanding ADHD, as you said, as a distinction between knowledge and performance, and that it's a performance disorder, is absolutely crucial to working effectively with these people. And, and taking a little bit of a leap here is, I've heard you talk about the research where those with ADHD tend to do better, like, I'm gonna say blue collar jobs, where they're working with their hands and they can, can, can kind of see it, um, and they struggle a little bit more with jobs that require concepts and things that they kind of play ahead. Am I misrepresenting is that? No, no, not at all. I think the reason for that, as we pointed out, is you they can't hold information in mind yep. and use it to guide yep. themselves yep. very effectively because that's what happens between the knowledge and performance brain. The yep. performance brain goes back, reaches back into the knowledge brain and pulls up this information and holds it online yep. in mind. That's yep. what working memory does. Yep. And because working memory is part of the performance brain, they can't do that very yep. well. They may know things, but they don't activate it online yep. and use it to guide themselves. Yep. So guess what? It's better for them to do things that don't rely a lot yep. on working memory. And of course, doing things yep. manually, yep. whether it's the trades, whether yep. it's the arts or things like that, those will be yep. things they can do better at because it doesn't require yep. a lot of this mental yep. information to guide them. And so we, I, we, we did it. We released attention talk, uh, video before on working memory. In that video, this is something I do regularly when I'm working with clients is I'll, they'll come in and I'll, I'll say, I'm going to give you five words. I'm going to say them out loud. I don't want you to repeat them and I don't want you to write them down. And I'll tell them those five words and I'll ask them to repeat them back to me in alpha order. And the reason I do that is they can begin to witness their working memory because they have to hold the list that I gave them, look at the words individually and kind of rearrange them. And it's interesting to me, about 50% of them either don't get the order right or they forget some words in the process. And the reason I'm describing that, Dr. Barkley, is holding that and, and manipulating that in your mind and working memory is organizing and executing that information. And so uh, the reason I tell them not to write it down or to say it is because then they're, they're making it public. And when they do that, um, so many ADHD structures are to make that information public so that they don't have to use their working memory and they can manipulate it around. And I want to kind of jump forward in my coaching. Today the big thing is all these electronic devices and it's, it sounds really good for organizing, but 
you talk to some kids or, or even some adults where they're having a computer in front of them and they're having to toggle between one screen and another screen and maybe another screen or scroll up and down and you're back in a situation where you're trying to hold that information in working memory and as I say all too often is when it happens just print it all out so you can see it and you don't have to hold it in working memory. Your, your, your thoughts on that? Yes, I, I think you've illustrated uh, to me three key points here. The first is you've shown in a very simplified way uh, what the working memory deficit is. It's holding this information in mind, the five words yep. that you talked about and manipulating it, putting it in alphabetical order and then having to recite it. That is very, very hard for them to do. So it illustrates the problem and as you point out, in a very, very simple way because in the environment, the working memory challenges that we face are much more complicated. I'm, my goodness, yes, I mean, yes. you have to plan out your workday, yep. people have to plan weddings and do projects that involve a lot more than just five words being held yep. in the right sequence. The second thing that it illustrates is you've also suggested what might help them to compensate for their working memory problems. And as we spoke about, that means uh, offloading information yep. to external devices. So uh, as you said, it, it, you don't want them to write it down. You don't want them to talk to themselves uh, when you're showing them the working memory deficit yep. because that helps to compensate for it. Well, guess what? Those are strategies you can teach them to use in their daily life. Yep. If there's things that have to be held in mind, commitments you've made, then write them down, put them on sticky yep. notes, carry a journal with you, but otherwise offload the demand on your working memory onto some external yep. storage device, whether it's something as simple as a sheet of paper yep. or a journal or a calendar yep. or a do list offload the demand and put it in front of you. So you've shown both the problem and one way of compensating for the problem. I think the third thing you've pointed out here, however, is that high tech isn't necessarily the best way to deal with the working memory difficulty. Now, for some people it is, but we have found that low tech may actually be better than high tech. So for instance, it's better that you carry a journal with you and write things down that you can keep in front of you yep. than it is for you to have a digital memory stick onto which yep. you dictate the things you're trying to remember. Because first of all, you have to make sure that the memory stick yep. is charged, yep. that the batteries yep. are up to date, that you can locate it, that you turn it on, that you play it back again and write down what you've said to yourself. And we find people losing these memory sticks under their car seats yep. or yep. behind furniture or the batteries went dead right at a critical point where they needed yep. it. So it's not always the best, even though it sounds very attractive as a means yep. of dealing with working memory. Whereas journals, you know, week at a glance yep. calendars, uh, sticky notes, cards, these low tech solutions yep. are often the easiest ones for them to use in order to offload yep. their working memory yep. onto some external yep. device. It also, uh, just go a little bit step further, it goes a little bit further too because for those in this situation when they have a lot going on, what I find in coaching people is many with ADHD have a lot of things that are visually out and they're visual reminders because if they put out of sight is out of mind and so they have a tendency to keep things out, they look not like hoarders, but they have a lot of things because it's it's their virtual memory that's out there to remind them to kind of move forward. And and I say that because it's helpful for a spouse or somebody else because if you understand what's going on, you can then be, at least manage the environment because you realize if you put it all away, the person's not going to be able to remember everything, but you understand the function of it is. So you can begin to like parcel off certain parts of the house in certain areas so that it can function in those ways and you can have some peace in, in some other areas. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it helps you to understand why this person yep. may well uh, have a desk that's organized in a way that you wouldn't yep. have organized it. You might find it better to work with just a single project in front of you or a single sheet of paper, whatever yep. you're doing right now. But these people may have six, seven, eight stacks of things yep. around them. They're all related to that project. It might look a little messier to you than it does to them, but you need to understand that this is a better way for them to deal with yep. it. They've had to put their working memory down on the desktop yep. into these six or seven piles in order to be able yep. to keep it there and manipulate yep. it and blend it together, whereas you would be doing yep. all of that in your mind using your working yep. memory. So you're absolutely right. It does help the non-ADHD partner or spouse or supervisor to understand why the person yep. may need to have their workspace yep. organized very differently from yep. a typical worker. And so, again, I wanted to just do this video to give everybody an understanding that the working memory is a problem. It's the, it's the execution of that knowledge. Those with ADHD, they're smart, they know what to do, but they have a hard time applying it. And so many structures out there talk about externalizing that. And one of my pet peeves, Dr. Barkley, is, is to a certain extent, those with ADHD are swimming upstream because 
it's more convenient for society if they do it their way in some of these electronic means and many times those with ADHD are bullied into that and so much in coaching I can't tell you how many people I've worked with and said when it comes to bill paying let's go to paper let's go to the old-fashioned way where we're actually writing checks and it's amazing the difference that they have and manage it because they externalize it and they can play with it and it also helps us understand what structures make sense and why in the in the context Absolutely. Understand it's not a moral yep. failing. It's not low IQ. It's not lack of effort. It's yep. a working memory yep. deficit and they're struggling to compensate with and it. And if you work with it, you can go a lot further than work against it. So Dr. Barkley, thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, Jeff. Thank you. Take care, everybody.